Good morning all, just uh, testing USB solar panels again and uh, we have a good day for it today. It's not yet uh, midday, actually it might be past midday but of course we're on British summer time so uh, the sun isn't quite on axis with this panel yet. But let's have a look at what's going on. The panel's in full sun and I've got two power monitors on here now because of course one socket has a theoretical maximum output of 10.5 watts but of course there are two sockets so conceivably you could draw uh, 20 something watts so let's see what we've got so I'm getting 6.9 watts now I've angled the panel towards the Sun and got almost exactly 8 watts so it looks like 8 watts is about the maximum through one socket now interestingly the other power monitor this black power monitor which is in the other socket seems to be showing, showing some evidence that this thing is doing its smart port thing, smart USB it's because it's showing Apple 2.1 amps there 2.7, 2.0, then it switches off and reboots and comes up with Samsung 2.0 amps, 1.25 volts on each of the two outputs I've uh, done a little bit of experimenting with the power banks, this Avantech certainly takes the most juice when it's empty, uh, 2.1 amps, that drops off fairly quickly to 2 amps, but it holds 2 amps fairly consistently. This power add takes about 1.75 amps, so that's the uh, second one. So it's only really this Avantech that's going to draw the full 10 watts, uh, if I can get 10 watts, out of this socket, 2 amps, 5 volts. And then there are the cables. These uh, flat cables definitely seem to be the best USB cables I've got from the point of view of uh, current draw, uh, they don't look particularly uh, sort of high current, but um, I'm getting the maximum current out of these. I've swapped through three or four different ones. Uh, I've got a short version of that um, flat cable, and that draws just ever so slightly more current as you'd expect. The long one though is pretty good and a bit more practical when I'm trying to sort of lift this panel up and angle it towards the sun. Uh, the temperatures on these panels are quite high now, they've been in the sun for a fair old while, 52 degrees centigrade, 51. The bottom one seems to be uh, a bit less at uh, 46, 47. So for fun, let's just try a very unscientific uh, cooling the panel down test with a bottle of water. We're getting 7.09, so 7.1 watts with the hot panels. I'm going to need quite a bit of water I think, so let's really go for this. This thing will dry out. Of course, I'm not actually getting the water on the panels, it's only going on the plastic fronts. And what have we got? 7.3 watts, 7.29. So a little bit of extra power by cooling the panels down. I'll check the temperatures now. And they're definitely cooler, 37 at the top there, 32 and just 29 on the bottom panel. So not a huge difference in uh, power when you cool the panels down so I think we can probably uh, ignore that test, it's fairly impractical, quite difficult to do. I'm joined by all manner of horrid creatures, there are wasps buzzing around and all sorts and now a crane fly has decided it wants to take part and has attached itself to this gap in the, uh, in the parasol. It's uh, not a completely cloudless sky but it's not bad over here it's pretty good, not many clouds there. Now it's September the 19th today so uh, we're only two days away from the autumn equinox so the sun isn't as high in the sky as it would be in mid-June but waiting for next June to do these tests would be uh, rather impractical so uh, I'm gonna go with this but I'm not gonna get as much power as I would do in June. Now in the settings for the YZX Studio monitor I've just found a brightness control Duh! Why didn't I think of that before? So I've increased the brightness. Now that helps quite a bit. Uh, a quick on-axis test. I've tipped the uh, panel up. It's quite hard to film this, but let's just see what we get. And I'm getting just over 8 watts. So that, I think, is about the maximum. I was just trying to increase the brightness on the uh, black power monitor, but it is actually already set on the maximum. 127 and I imagine that's been done because of this sort of not entirely clear black plastic casing which does 
drop the light level down quite a bit. This one's almost impossible to film outdoors. So you can see from the shadows um, off the legs of my support here that we're still not on axis. The sun has to come around a bit further. Actually, I've just realised that this unit doesn't actually face completely due south. So I ought to turn it a bit. I wonder if I'll give that a go. Uh, well, it wasn't very keen to move and uh, it is now a bit wobbly because uh, it was fairly well bedded in in the lawn there. But uh, this is now at least on axis with my solar shed, which I remember uh, taking some care to get pointing directly due south. So this is now directly due south. And that has had an effect on the power generated. It's now up to 7.95 watts. Now the reason it's not the full eight is because this panel's tilted at the wrong angle. It needs to be, uh, I think that's called azimuth. It's the wrong azimuth. It needs to be tipped up a bit more to, uh, to be on axis with the sun. Now I've got another solar panel now. This one is a Vinzik. Uh, it's supposed to be 22 watts. It's a fair bit bigger. Um, each of the four panels on this one, uh, rather than three, has five cells in it rather than four. So the Suoki was uh, three by four, 12 cells. This is four by five, 20 cells. Uh, this one is showing that it's an Apple 2.4 amp. We've got 2. Point, uh, well, I think that's meant to be 2.75 on both D plus and D minus. It's actually showing 2.66, but it's being identified as an Apple 2.4 amp. And this one is kicking out close to the theoretical maximum. Actually, not on a 2.4 amp socket. If this was a, a 2 amp socket, 10 watts, 5 volts. But the 5 volts is holding up well, 5.00. 7, 8, and we're getting 9 point, well almost 9.9 .9 watts. But of course with this one, because it's so much bigger, I actually need to connect up both um, outputs to two power banks. I'm doing both these. Uh, but now something rather interesting has happened. This one's dropped to 4.7 watts. Now I would have thought that would hold, and then this one would add in. That's You can't read that, but it's 3. Oh, the sun's gone in. Yeah, so not quite the problems I was having the other day, but the sun has gone by a teeny little cloud, so I'm going to have to wait for that to uh, move on. But that's a surprise. 4.75 uh, watts on one of the panels, and that's virtually unreadable, but it's 3.5 watts on the other, so that's 8.2. That's actually less than if I just have the one power bank drawing current on its own. And the sun's actually gone behind quite a thick bit of cloud. There isn't much of it, but it's fairly thick. And so no surprise that the power's dropped right off to uh, just three quarters of a watt. It's really cold now actually. It's like a solar eclipse. It's suddenly gotten really cold. My amorphous panels are making these sort of stress clicks because the, uh, they're cooling down so much. Oh look, that uh, little guy didn't stand a chance on those hot panels, did he? So interlude over and we're back to normal service. Now this is relevant, uh, 10 watts out of this uh, panel now, which uh, you'd expect. But if I unplug that power monitor, 10.13 watts, 10.14. So about 1.15 watts consumed by the power monitor itself. I mean, that is significant. But with both power banks plugged in again, back down to 4.7 and about 3.3 .3. well that's 8 watts isn't it so less with two power banks power banks plugged into the two outputs of this panel only 8 watts with only one power bank plugged in I'm getting 10 watts that's odd I think I might have a lot to do with voltage with one power bank plugged in we're on 4.88 volts so not far under 5 with uh, double the amount of load, or at least almost double the amount of load, it's actually dropped to 4.5 volts, or possibly 4.6 volts. So you can understand why this is really struggling to put out the power um, when it's got more load on it. So actually that's quite interesting. In a direct shootout between the Suoki 16-watt uh, nominal panel and the Vinzik 22-watt, um, the Vinzik can deliver more power into one load, 10 watts, the Suoki is only giving me 8 watts uh, today, 
but if you try to connect two devices to the Vinzic, the bigger one, the one on the left, um, it starts to conk out, it starts to drop its voltage and uh, not actually deliver as much. So uh, it looks like both of these panels, you're better off just plugging one device in. It doesn't seem that uh, you can gain any benefit by plugging two devices in. Uh, and, and in which case you don't get a huge amount of advantage with the much bigger panel. You get a little bit, but uh, not a lot. No, I definitely can't get as much into two power banks uh, charging together. 5.6 watts on the one, uh, 2.3 watts on the other, so that's 8 watts. And uh, more weird stuff now. I'm only getting 8.4 watts out of the uh, single port. The other port's not got anything connected. But if I disconnect the power bank and then reconnect it, it shoots up to 10.4 watts. Well, maybe that's the power bank doing that and not the solar panel. There are so many variables here. Now, the solar panel is working so well that this power bank is actually charging up. Um, it's hard to see because of the uh, display multiplexing on there. But it's two uh, bars on solid and the third one flashing. So it's actually really charging up quite effectively. And that's not surprising because we've got uh, 5 volts almost holding, uh, 10 watts and 2.05 amps. That's a fair old uh, rate of charge. So I'm going to have to have a look at the cost of this uh, Vinzic panel, this uh, 22 watt panel. Uh, if it's only giving 2 watts more than the Suoki panel, this one here, which is the 16 watt panel, um, if there's a significant price difference then you may be better off with the cheaper one. So here's the proof that you can get 2.1 amps. It's just dropping back a little bit, I'm not sure why, probably the power bank. Oh, it's going back up again, That's, that must be the sun, although there's no clouds in front of it. Strange, but uh, nearly 2.1 amps uh, out of one of these sockets, 10.3 watts. Oh, the sun's gone behind a cloud. Look how quickly it drops off. My goodness. Now on this Vinzic panel, it does say, even in cloudy day, you can still charge your devices with this charging panel, but the charging efficiency will be low, causing a prolonged charging time. Yeah, well, not half. Well, in fact, not half, because... Um, it can drop to 10%, uh, even 5% when, um, when you lose the full sun. So I'm back to the uh, Suoki panel now, the uh, nominally 16 watt, but uh, maximum would be 10.5 watts. Now it's slightly tilted up because I've just um, lifted the back of the, uh, uh, the stand up out of the uh, hole in the grass and up onto the grass. The shadows are virtually pointing backwards, so it's pretty much on axis. And this is developing uh, about 8.2, possibly as much as 8 and a quarter watts into the, uh, the greediest power bank that I've got. And uh, just to test with uh, two power banks plugged into the smaller panel, the Suoki one, so it got the same problem as on the Vinzic. It's pulling the voltage down. The voltage is down to 4.5 volts on there. Uh, you can just about make out that it's uh, 4.5 or 4.6 volts on there. So it's suffering from the same problem of having the voltage pulled down. Now could that be some sort of weird interaction between the two power banks being connected effectively in parallel? I don't know, I can't see it really. I mean these just have a linear regulator to take uh, the 5 volts input down to the 3.7 which is going to be sort of varying between 3 at the beginning of the charge and up to about 4.2 at the end. I can't see that that would cause the uh, reduction in voltage. I think that's just literally loading on the panel. There's so much load. But, but here, the two power banks are, gen are drawing 8 watts exactly the same as if I put one power bank on there, it just draws 8 watts. That seems to be the limit of this panel. So I don't think there's uh, any point doing a whole lot more solar panel, USB solar panel uh, power testing now because the uh, sun has swung around it significantly off uh, the south axis. You can see that from my uh, tool shed panel here which does face pretty much due south. If you look at the shadow on the pole holding up the uh, lower panels there it's moved quite a way around uh, to the right which means the sun behind me is to my left and in fact you can even see that in the reflection in those solar panels. So we're well past 
uh, well, uh, Greenwich Mean Time midday, which is 1 p.m. British summer time. So I think that's it. I'm going to pack all this stuff up. And uh, but that was a very interesting days. USB solar panel testing. Cheerio.